Hello everyone. Welcome to the next training session of SAP controlling module. In the controlling part will be today's topic for the training is product costing. In product costing the table for content which we'll be covering today is overview on product costing, product cost controlling components, product cost planning, cost object controlling and maintaining material master for product costing. As a part of material master it includes bill of material, activity prices maintained for cost centers, resources or work center, master recipe or routing, product versions and maintain overhead rates. One thing I want to make you very clear that the product costing which we are going through today is just an overview on the product costing module. We will not be going into the configuration or the end user transactions in the product costing as this is a highly integrated module where the transactions or the data flow from many of the other SAP components like material master, sales and distribution, production planning, quality management and all. As a result of which we cannot go for completing the product costing as just from the controlling side. So we will be covering only the overview on the product costing, what it is all about, what are the different components, how it works, what are the different steps within the controlling part which has to be done uh, for product costing calculations. So moving on to the next, the first point as a table of content, overview on product costing. Product costing is the backbone of a strong standard cost system. This is the process by which production activities are recorded at standard values and variances from actual costs are isolated. Product costing is the process of tracking and studying all the various expenses that are accrued in the production and the sale of a product. It roughly comprises of raw material expenses, process cost which include wire, gas, electricity and other elements such as transportation, tool cost, staff cost, welding and many more such expenses. Product cost controlling provides information for the following business functions that is inventory valuation in financial accounting, controlling the cost of goods manufactured in cost object controlling, profitability analysis and profit center accounting. So product costing is one of the important tool in the SAP environment and in the SAP controlling part as well. It explains how to determine the cost of a product or a unit. Product costing is used to know the unit cost of goods manufactured or sold. It helps not only to know the cost of production but also useful to know the profitability of the product. In SAP, the product cost planning is divided into three different components which will be coming up in a later, uh, somewhat later in the slides. Now moving on to the next is the purpose of product costing. So product costing has got different purposes if you talk about from the financial accounting perspective that is SAP FI module. Product costs are used to value inventory for the balance sheet and even to compute COGS that is cost of goods sold for the income statement so as to evaluate the correct income for the organization. Whereas if you talk about the managerial counting that is the SAP controlling module, product costing are used for decision makings like pricing, what prices has to be charged 
what should be the sale price what should be the uh, the different prices has to be decided by the management once they know the cost of the product which has been manufactured the product line decisions has to be decided on the basis of the the product cost so the product line decisions in that the management see looks into that what is the actual cost of the product and what is the sale price and what is the profitability of the product that the organization has been able to make with that particular product so accordingly they decides the product line to be for the organization for the future ahead it also includes manage control or reduce the cost of a product by various steps been taken for the reduction then the performance evaluation of managers it also helps in deciding the performance of the managers how efficient they are while using these reports how they can cut down the cost how they can decide the cost of the product and the sale price and what is the profitability of the product to the organization so the product cost module uses the data from various different modules for valuation like from production planning that is pp module the data managed in the pp module is bills of material and routing or you can say the master recipe the product costing modules uses the various quantities of raw material and packaging material required from the bill of material it evaluates this quantity with the various prices available in the material master in accordance with the strategy specified in the customizing similarly it accesses the various quantity quantitative details mentioned in the routing so your material and your routing includes your what are the total quantities which will be used as a part of the material the time required for each operation is even specified in the routing so what is the quantity what are the different material which has to be used and what is the exact timing for each operations for that particular product will be taken these all are been mentioned in the routing or the master recipe this quantity is then multiplied by the activity price so there are different activities involved when you manufacture a product and every different activities has got a different activity prices so when a product is finally ready this quantity is multiplied by the activity prices mentioned in the cost center accounting module so as to decide the actual cost of the good manufactured so it's it's very important module for deciding the product costing in sap now moving on to the next is let's see how this costing is done in a detailed format cost flows and classifications in a manufacturing company or an organization so before moving up to the diagram as on the screen product cost are cost incurred to either purchase or manufacture the goods for manufactured goods these cost consist of direct material direct labor and manufacturing overhead it will be helpful at this point to look briefly at the flow of cost in a manufacturing company as on the diagram this will help us to understand how a product cost move through the various accounts and how they affect the balance sheet and the income statement of the entity now as in the diagram it illustrates the flow of cost in a manufacturing company where a raw materials purchase are recorded in the raw material inventory account that is over here raw material purchase cost has been reflected in the raw material inventory account or gl when raw material materials are purchased are used in the production sorry when the raw material are used in production their cost are transferred to the work in progress inventory account as a direct material so you can see over here the arrow raw material purchases 
value flow to the raw material inventory account and when the raw material is used for further processing or manufacturing purposes the raw material inventory cost moves from raw material inventory account to work in progress inventory account so this is where the direct material is used in the production process so their costs are transferred to the work in progress inventory account as a direct material notice that direct labor cost and manufacturing overhead cost are added directly to the work in progress as you can see over here in the production cost the direct labor and the material overhead over here are directly been included in the work in process inventory so the work in progress can be viewed most simply as the products on an assembly line the direct material direct labor and manufacturing overhead cost added to the work in progress are the cost needed to complete this product as they move along the assembly line notice from the exhibit that the goods are completed their cost are transferred now from the work in progress inventory to the finished goods inventory so as a product is manufactured from raw material to a work in progress and when it is moved from raw material work in progress inventory to the finished goods as they are completed as a part of finished goods now the cost gets flown to the finished goods inventory account here the goods await sale to the customers so that is why this is the the value which has been flown to the fixed finished goods inventory is also known as cost of goods manufactured and these are those cost of goods manufactured or you can say finished goods inventory which have been sold later on to the customer and as the goods are sold the goods their cost have been transferred from the finished goods over here now so you can see the arrow on the on the right hand side that the cost gets moved from cost of goods manufactured to cost of goods sold so this is how the value gets flow from one to the another part so you can see now that the starting part the cost been flown into the balance sheet accounts and at the end from the finished goods inventory now the value has been flowing now to the income statement at this point the various cost required to make the product are finally recorded as an expense so now onwards whatever the expenses which whatever the cost which have been incurred for manufacturing that particular finished goods inventory account has now been moved as an expense to the income statement beyond earlier to that the cost are of the inventory account were in the balance sheet side so the product now you can see that the value has been moved from the balance sheet to the income statement and later on in that the selling and distribution expense or the admin expenses are been incurred so as to sell those products so they are termed as the marketing expenses or selling expenses or admin expenses they all have been added and to the income statement side so this is the total cost flow from one to the another part and this is where the costing of product is done it seems very simple as per the diagram but when you go for a manufacturing of a product that includes a huge many things in it so that is uh, that is why this inventory as is stored and the inventory has been moved from the balance sheet to the income statement the product cost are often called inventoryable cost the reason is that these cost go directly into the inventory account as they are incurred first into the work in progress account and then into the finished goods 
rather than going directly into the expense account. So the values are stored in the work in progress or the finished goods inventory until they are sold. So till the point they are not been sold, they have been stored in the inventory account, they have been called inventoryable cost. This is a key concept because such cost can end up on the balance sheet as assets as you can see on the diagram until they are sold as assets if goods are only partially completed then they will be stored in the work in progress account in the balance sheet and if they are unsold as a finished goods at the end of the year they will be a part of finished goods inventory account again that will be reflected in your balance sheet at the end of the period the material labor overhead costs that are associated with the units whether in the work in progress or finished goods inventory accounts will appear on the balance sheet only as an asset. These, will, these costs will not become expenses until the goods are completed and sold to a customer. So this is how your cost flows from the balance sheet to the income statement. Finally. Now moving on to the next is the cost center accounting sorry cost center components. So as in the index as a as a table of content we discussed that the product cost controlling have been divided into two components one is product cost planning and another is cost object controlling. So let's see what this product cost planning is all about and the cost object controlling is all about. Product cost planning. Cost elements with a quantity structure are used to plan cost and set prices for materials before an order to commence manufacturing is received. This type of cost estimate requires a BOM. BOM refers to bill of material and routing both are the part of master data in PP module or a master data recipe master recipe again in the PP module for the material being costed. So the PP module is used as a part of the planning of the production. Product cost planning supplies information for other modules as well such as standards for judging production efficiency in cost object controlling prices to be written to the material master and transferred to profitability analysis, price floors for sales and distribution. So it refers to the creation of cost estimates for the production of goods or services. If a quantity structure like bill of material and routing is available in the production planning module you can create a cost estimate automatically using the PP data. If no quantity structure is available in the cost items, it can be entered manually by means of unit costing or can be transferred automatically from a non SAP system using a batch input. So again there are different components within the product cost planning will come to that. So what are the different purposes of product cost planning? The purpose are to calculate non-order related cost of goods manufactured and cost of goods sold for each product unit. To establish how the costs are broken down for each product and to calculate the value added for each step of the production process. To optimize the cost of goods manufactured through comparison costings that is in the product cost controlling information system. To provide this basic information for other R3 applications for example to establish standards with which to access production efficiency in the cost object controlling. To update the prices in the material master record and in the profitability analysis. 
lower unit limits for sales and distribution. So as on the screen there are different components of product cost planning. One is material cost estimate with quantity structure, material cost estimate without quantity structure, price update, reference and simulation costing, easy costing planning and execution services. These are the different components through which the product is product cost planning is done. You can plan the material cost estimate with the quantity as if you know the quantity of the material to be produced. You can even plan the cost estimate without the quantity structure as we discussed uh, uh, just now and even you can you can plan it with price update as said that you can update the prices as well manually in the SAP system. So these are the various components of product cost planning. So in the organizational structure each company code needs to be assigned to a controlling area. Material are always valued at the valuation area level while costing must be performed at the plant level. Valuation area created with the same name for each plant. All costing data is then stored with the with reference to a plant only. So we do the costing of a product only at the plant level. Product cost planning is a highly integration with different modules. It accesses master data in other components such as BOM that is bill of material, routings and work centers in the production planning module, cost centers, activity types and business processes in the overhead cost controlling part. Cost data within the product cost planning can also be made available to other applications. For example, you can update the standard price in material master with results of cost estimates and evaluate materials using this new standard price. So before moving up to the next component of product costing, let's first discuss what are the different material master for product costing to be maintained. Material master from the MM module, bill of material, work center, routing from the production planning module, production order and product cost control collector from the CEO part. If you come to one by one material master, a material master is created for each product with a unique fit form function in a plant. The material master contains many views including material resource planning views, accounting views and costing views. The following views of material master are important for product costing. In a material master if you have ever seen there are multiple views which have to be maintained like basic data, MM related data, accounting views, costing views, sales views, then MRP views, a lot of different views has to be maintained. So in that you for product costing the accounting and the costing views are important which need to be maintained in the material master data. Two costing relevant fields on MRP2 view are procurement type and special procurement key which need to be maintained in the MRP2 view tab. In that the procurement key further designates if a material is subcontracted, purchased from another plant etc. It is important that these two fields that is procurement type and special procurement type are correct when 
costing a material. So these costing views need to be checked and maintained properly before going for a costing run. The another master data is bill of material. Bill of material which also known as BOM is the list of standard input material and their quantity required to produce a specified unit of the given output material. While costing any semi-finished or finished goods, the input material required for costing is picked up from BOM of the output material. For an internally produced material, a bill of material that is BOM is created. A BOM contains the component of materials and the quantities required to produce a finished or a semi-finished goods. The material cost of a product is calculated using the standard or the moving average price of the BOM components depending upon the price control that is standard price which refers to as S and V refers for moving average price. Now these two prices either of these two has to be maintained in the material master data and from there the prices are being captured in the BOM. So these two prices are very important for a correct costing of a material of a product. Moving to the work center. Work center again is a master data in the PP module in SAP. A work center in an is an organizational unit at which an operation is performed. A work center can be a machine, it can be a person, it can be a production line or a group of workers. The work center are assigned to a plant. The master data, master record for each work center specifies a cost center and or a process, business process. The cost center or the business process is assigned to a controlling area. The work centers assigned to the cost center or the business process can be in different plant as well. The plant is in assigned to a single company code which in turn is assigned to controlling area. So it can be said that the, these all things are internally assigned to each other for the linkages. So work center identifies a machine or a work area where a production process is performed. Each work center or a resource utilizes a standard value key which is unique set of activities related to the product center which need to be carefully maintained or decided. Moving to the next master data is routing. Routing is a list of operations that are carried out in the production process. Routing gives sequence of operations and quantum of activities performed in respective cost center to produce given output of a specified material. While computing standard conversion costs, standard operations performed in a process along with their standard timings are given by routing. So in addition to a BOM, a routing or a master recipe is created to indicate the processes required to produce a material. In production planning, manufacturing, a routing is made up of a series of operations that are that include even a work center and a quantity, activity quantities, which define a production process. In production planning process industries, a master recipe is used for batch oriented process manufacturing. So this routing or a master recipe is needed in the product in the PP module for a batch oriented process manufacturing. Even a master recipe contains the processes required for producing a material including the resource instead of the work center required for the production. 
So these are the different master data which need to be maintained in the in the SAP system so as to have the costing of the product center. Even if you talk about the repetitive manufacturing industry, the repetitive manufacturing utilizes rate routing and product cost controllers. Product cost controllers are created for each production version and capture cost per period rather than per order. So if there are multiple, there are, even there are multiple ways of to produce a material including different material combinations or activities, production versions can be used, production version indicate a combination of bomb and routing or master recipe required to produce a material. Just like now if you take an example, let's say we are using product costing to value our inventory in a cookie baking shop. This will help us value our cookies that is the finished goods, frosting that is semi-finished goods and baking items like eggs, milks and sugar as raw materials. In order to calculate the cost, we need a list of integrants that is known as BOM, Bill of Material and a recipe of steps to follow routing or master recipe. There, are, there may be several ways that we can bake the same cookie by substituting integrants or baking in different ovens. So we can have several versions of our integrants and recipe that is product versions. In order to accurately calculate the cost of producing our cookies, we need to define the places where baking activities occur, that is the work centers or resources. For example, we may use a refrigerator, mixing station, oven, cooling station and packaging station. Each would be considered as a work center and we assign different activities like labor and overhead to each work centers. The work centers and amount of each activity are indicated in our recipe that is routing or, or master recipe as operations. Using the cost for each integration, sorry, each integrants, that is the master, material master data, in our integrants list, that is BOM, and the rate for activities in our recipe, that is routing or master recipe, we can calculate the cost of producing a cookie. Further information. Material master that is M. in material master uh, there is a tab called MRP are crucial in product costing with quantity structure. You must recalculate and release cost to reflect the changes in production data like bomb, routings or recipes and product versions. So this is how you can calculate the cost of producing a cookie with and we have seen that how these different master data are used in valuing the cost of a product at different stages. So this is what I tried to make you understand in a with a practical scenario that how these different material uh, masters or different master data are used in the product product costing so as to calculate the cost of producing a cookie. So now moving back to the second component of product costing that is cost object controlling. Cost object controlling component enables you to determine the cost of goods manufactured 
or cost of goods sold for the manufacturing or service output of the company. Cost object controlling assigns the cost incurred in the company to the activity units of the company such as products, product groups and orders. Cost object controlling includes product cost by order, product cost by period and product cost by sales order. So the cost object controlling provides the real time cost management functions that determine the cost of goods manufactured in all plants. Cost object controlling can be used to determine the cost of goods manufactured or the cost of goods sold for company activities. It can calculate the planned cost of the planned order quantity for logistical order, calculate planned cost of make to order production, accumulate actual cost for other cost objects, compare actual cost against target cost and analyze the variances and even determine the price flows for products or orders. The function of cost object controlling is to is used on the basis of lots or periods. So I said that the, the cost object controlling includes cost product cost by order if we are we are going on for producing order to order level that is make to order then there is product cost by time where a time period is even assigned and the product cost by sales order so let's see each of the different types of cost object controlling one by one product cost by order product cost by order is used in the below environments where the the manufacturing concern has the below environments it is being used at those particular places or you can say the environments where product cost by period is applicable as under that is higher volume production stable manufacturing environment individual lot best cost measurement is not required cost are collected on product cost collectors example repetitive manufacturing so repetitive manufacturing is one of the example where product cost by period is been used for cost object controlling the applicable component product cost by period enables the period periodic analysis of cost at the level of products This means that you collect cost on a cost object order over an extended length of time and analyze the debits and credits to the cost object in each period. In repetitive manufacturing environment, you always record and analyze cost on the basis of product cost collectors. In order related production or maybe process manufacturing, when you are not interested in analyzing the cost of orders, in this case, we don't record the cost on the manufacturing order. Instead, we create a product cost collector and record the cost on that. So, a product cost by period is used in a repetitive environment kind of a manufacturing where the costing is to be done on the basis of the data which has been collected over a period of time. Moving to the next is product cost by order. Now this particular cost object controller has been used in the, uh, in the environment that is highly flexible production environment, high setup cost full assignment of cost to orders required cost measurement is by the production lot required so in this particular case the production is done on the basis of lots and orders 
so this in this particular case that is the product cost by order cost is analyzed at the level of manufacturing orders how many orders that they have received for the manufacturing part product cost by order is used with make to stock production and sales order related production in sales order related production that is uh, the next part that is product cost by sales order in sales order related production you can use the production cost by order component in mass production environment on the basis of sales order and as a supplement to the cost to the production cost by sales order in production cost by order that is in this particular component the manufacturing orders used as the cost objects the cost updated on the manufacturing orders are usually analyzed and settled by lot this means that in most cases variances are not determined until the entire quantity to be manufactured has been received into inventory the cost for manufacturing orders can also be analyzed and settled by period if required however sap recommends analyzing and settling manufacturing orders by lot rather than by period so this particular order product cost by order is used in where the order system or a lot system is applicable for manufacturing concerns moving to the next is product cost by order sales orders the environment in which product cost by sales order applicable are as on the screen costs and revenues are collected by sales order regardless of the particular manufacturing scenario actual sales and administrating administration cost are collected on sales order item special direct cost of sales are collected on sales order item funds commitments are monitored work in progress goods in transport and reserves are determined by results analysis so in a product order related production environment there are two ways to collect and analyze the cost in mass production on the basis of sales order the focus of cost measurement is on the material being manufactured if you are using a valuated sales order inventory in a master record environment you can collect and analyze the cost on manufacturing orders or on product cost collectors whereas in the second part second way out in complex make to order we collect and analyze the cost separately for each sales order item in this case there is a need to implement the functions of product cost by sales order different cases where product cost by sales order are used like when you are producing in house with reference to a sales order in a complex make to order environment the another case where sales uh, order has been used is when you purchase merchandise with reference to a sales order and resell the merchandise to the customer and the third case that could be there is when you perform services on the basis of sales order so these are some of the scenarios or cases where production cost by sales order is used 
So next moving ahead, these were the different three different types of cost object controlling that we discussed product cost by period, product cost by order and product cost by sales order. Now moving on to moving on to the data flow in the cost object controlling as you can see the diagram on the screen it reflects to how the cost flows from one particular component to the another component and finally to the cost object controlling part. So if you look into this we can see that the data has been flowing from the PP side and the MM side. So what happens is in the MM part we need to create the material master and then from the PP it moves from MM to the FI and then FI to OM overhead management and from overhead management to PP and in PP with the help of uh, routing bomb the values get flown to the MM part and then from MM to PCP that is product cost planning and then the value ultimately flows to the cost object controlling. So you can see over here from the FI part even the value flows from the OM the value has been flowing from the PP it is the confirmation because from the PP the routing and the bomb is used on the and with the help of the routing bomb work centers rest master recipe the values get reflected in the cost object controlling so as to calculate the product cost of the particular material produced. So this is just an example overview of the diagram which shows you the flow of cost from one component to the another component in the cost object controlling. So this is about the cost object controlling part. Moving on now to the next is the actual cost concept or material ledger. This is again the third component of product costing which we have not covered but let's uh, just have a brief discussion on the material ledger and this is a very hot topic in the market because there are very few resources or consultants uh, uh, in the industry which relate to the material mass material ledger part or the actual cost concept part. So moving on the material ledger which is known as ML in short is a tool within the CO module that collects all transactional data for materials whose master data is stored in the material master. It acts as a subledger for selected materials that captures all goods movement, invoice values, transfers and price changes. On the basis of this data the material master ledger or you can see the material ledger calculates and maintain the actual cost for these material masters. This actual cost can be utilized then to evaluate the material stock accounts. So this is a very important concept or important part for calculating the actual cost of the product manufactured in any manufacturing concern. The objectives of the material ledger is first the actual costing. During the period valuations of all goods movements is done with the preliminary valuation price which is the normally known as the standard price which is maintained in the material master data. All variance from the preliminary valuation are maintained in the material ledger. At period end the revaluation of ending inventory can be performed with the determined actual price. This is not mandatory. Actual prices can be calculated for statistical purposes only. The another objective is parallel currencies and valuation of material stocks. All goods movement in, a, in the ledger can be maintained in three different currencies. The values are trans, translated into other currencies using historical exchange rates. Prerequisite of the uses of transfer pricing functionality that is to maintain the historical exchange rate. The different benefits of material ledger variances of finished goods to produce support for procurement related decisions 
combines the benefits of movement uh, sorry moving average and the standard price easy to use display errors display and errors finding by consolidating the views relatively simple configuration and setup contribution margin with actual cost of sales can be easily calculated So the actual costing is used to calculate the actual product cost at period end close. The result may be transferred to material master as a weighted average price for the closed period. The values connected with the material movements are collected in the material ledger. Both sing single level settlement and multi-level settlement functions are available to calculate the actual material cost at period end close. Actual costing uses the material ledger to store material prices in up to three currencies as said and according to three valuation strategies. One is group, legal and the third is profit center. Actual costing aims to provide the actual cost for each material at period close. Each material movement is recorded in the material ledger together with the preliminary valuation and any variance from inventory or order settlement. Material settlement is used to integrate this variance into the material price at the end of the period or the period close. Both single level and multi level material settlement are available. Multi level settlement is used to reconstruct the quantity structure based on the material movement for the period and assign variances for the raw material to the finished and semi finished production products as follow up cost. The actual price of each material can be updated to the material master for the period closed. So this is just an overview on the material ledger or you can see how the actual costing is used with the help of material ledger in the SAP system. So moving up to the overhead cost sheet, you must have been knowing about the cost set, how it works. In SAP, cost other than direct material, direct labor and machine cost which are not directly attributed to the products are called overhead cost. Overhead cost can be of different types such as material overhead, labor overhead, production overhead, administrative overhead or selling and distribution overhead. The cost will be covered in the above categories of overheads will be as follows that is material overhead. In material overhead the cost of all the indirect material which will not be captured through bomb will be taken in the taken up in the material overhead part whereas in the labor overhead the cost of all the indirect labor which will not be covered from the routing will be taken in in the labor overhead part. Production overhead other production cost which will not be captured through the prime cost as well as the material and labor overhead will be taken up in the production overhead. Whereas the cost of administrative expenses other than the production cost will be taken up in the administrative overhead as a part of indirect expenses and the selling and distribution expenses overhead includes the cost of selling and distribution expenses. Allocation of the above mentioned overheads can be on percentage basis or on the quantity basis. The overhead allocation amount is derived for each of these overheads through overhead costing seat. The costing sheet includes all parts 
relevant for the overhead costing and determines the rules for calculating the values to be posted into the system. The structure of the costing sheet includes the following parameters. One is calculate calculation base, another is overhead rate and the third is credit. Calculation base includes the primary cost element like direct material consumption account, internal activity allocations like direct labor cost to which a product overhead rate is to be applied. Calculation of base condition is specified in the base column of the costing sheet. Overhead rate, overhead rate determines under what condition and to what extent the percentage based or the quantity based overhead rate should be applied to the direct cost specification in the calculation base. Overhead rate condition is specified in the overhead rate column of the cost sheet. Whereas credit, when a product, when a production order or a product cost collector is debited with overhead and whereas on the, uh, is credited with overhead cost center, this overhead allocation is done through overhead cost element specified in the credit column along with the cost center of the overhead row. So this cost sheet is first has to be manually prepared in an Excel sheet and then only it should be decided how it can be done in the SAP system later on. So that a lot of working uh, has to be done before uh, preparing the costing sheet directly in the SAP system. So one need to decide what percentage or the quantity and what has to be assigned accordingly in it. Moving to the next is the costing run. Costing run is used to capture the cost involved in the manufacturing of a product. And this is the final uh, execution which is done at the period end as an activity uh, which has to be executed and once this costing run is done, the cost of the product is known. Costing run are used to cost mass amounts of materials in a single company code. Costing run allows you to select certain materials, explore their quantity structure, cost, analyze and mark and release it. Every processing steps involved in costing with quantity structure is performed by the costing run. So there are certain prerequisites for costing run. One is material master. In the material master it must include the MRP view, accounting view and costing views has to be maintained. Then the quantity structure which includes bills of materials, routing or master recipe, production versions are optional. So these things has to be maintained what are the materials used when producing a material in the, met in the bomb and what are the different activities which have been involved in the routing part. Purchase info records and condition type if desired for costing. Configuration, uh, con certain configuration are needed with respect to the cost component structure, costing variant, valuation variant and costing seat if required. Then comes the part of CO master data, primary and secondary cost element, activity type, mixed costing ratios and alternatives if required, additive cost if required are to be needed for the CO master part. So these are certain prerequisites which has to be there so as to successfully execute the costing run. So during the annual or monthly costing process, materials are costed in a costing run. There is a certain transaction in the SAP system for costing run. As you can see on the screen, I have uh, written that the transaction code is CK40N. This is the transaction run to execute the costing run in the SAP system. 
just so you a preview on the SAP screen which will give you better clarification with respect to the costing run so let's execute the transaction for costing run the transaction is CK40N enter so you can see the screen there on the system which shows you edit costing run so the transaction CK41 is used to execute the costing run analyze the results and mark and release the cost the costing run must be created using a costing variant as you can see on the screen there is a field for costing variant so that is something which need to which had to be created first then there is a costing version which has to be created and then there is a company code sorry controlling area and the company code which had to be defined in the SAP system and then there comes the transfer control therefore a costing run can only be created for one company code at a time the costing run is also created for a particular data range we'll discuss that one by one the costing run contains six steps as you can see on the below side that is the flow steps 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 these are the six steps which are needed to execute the costing run that is selection, structure explosion, costing, analysis, marking and release each step requires you to enter parameters and then save and then execute for example if I move on to this parameter in the selection part over here you can see in this third column there is a parameter if I click on to this, this uh, arrow mark over here when I click on to this it will take you to the next screen so you can see the next screen is there where you need to fill in the parameters which you want to execute for the parameter includes the, the material number for which you want to do the costing run then you need to fill the uh, material type and the plant if there is any and what is the costing run date at which you want to execute it so once you fill in these this particular details then you need to save the screen and once you save the screen then you can you have to come back to the same screen over here and you can execute this over here on the screen so this is the simple process that is to to fill the parameters for each of these steps and save it and ex execute it one by one. The selection parameters are entered which indicates which material should be costed. So once you click onto the selection over here in the parameters and you fill the details, these details are with respect to the material for which the costing run has to be done once you fill the details in these parameters and you save it that means the costing run will be done for these materials which has been defined in the system in the selection part then move to the next is the structure explosion step the selected material are exploded to pick up the component material from the bomb so the second step is used for for selecting those materials which are used in a bill of material or bomb so that their particular components can be picked and the costing can be done a bill of material is created for each internally produced material in the costing step fixed goods materials selected from the previous step are costed based on their bomb and routing or master recipe a routing or a master recipe is also created to indicate the processes required for a material the component material materials are also costed based on the costing configurations you can analyze the costing results over here while executing it using the available reports in the analysis parameters so once you will fill these first four first three steps then there comes the analysis in the analysis part you can execute and you can analyze the different 
different values from the from the materials which has been taken up in the reports and you can analyze your reports that what are the different costing which has been done on the basis of the parameters you have taken up in the previous steps in marking a step once we move on to the fifth step that is the marking you open the lock there is a lock over here as you can see you have to open this lock to authorize marking for a company code costing variant and the period so once you unlock this that means it becomes unlocked that the costing run has to be done for this particular company code this particular costing variant and for that particular period as a costing run which we have defined in the selection parameters once market marked in this step cost appears as a planned standard cost as estimates in the material master after executing once you have to unlock this over here and then you have to execute over here in the next part and once you execute you release the costing results once released cost are valid for the given date range and appears as current standard cost estimates in the material master data so on the basis of this costing run a new price gets updated in the material master for the next period after executing each step it is important to review the error lock so you must have to go through the error logs and resolve those errors because at times over here you can see in the second last column there is an option of error column so maybe there are certain errors for any of those steps you must have to go through those error logs and you have to resolve this those errors once resolving the errors in the given step you must re-execute each step from the beginning to see the effects if results do not update after executing you can press the refresh button on the topmost part over here you have the option to execute any step in background when processing a large number of materials and in such way you can execute your costing run so you must have to configure certain things for going through this costing runs that is you must need to configure your costing variant because your costing variant holds the criteria for costing costing variant contains a costing type which defines the object to be cleared and valuation variants let's take the same example which we discussed a while back about the cookie backing shop shop let's say that we are using product costing to value our inventory in a cooking in a cookie baking shop this will help us value our cookie cookies as a finished goods frosting as a semi finished goods and baking items like eggs milk and sugar as a raw material using the cost for each integrant in the material master in our integrant list that is bom and the rates for activities in our recipe that is routing or master recipe we can calculate the cost of producing a cookie in the sap system in costing our cookie we will cost the integrants as well once we are satisfied that our standard cost is okay we can choose to value our inventory at that cost and we can release that over there in the costing run so this is how you need to execute the costing run in the sap system this is just to give an overview because you need to do a lot of customizations to to go for this costing run like variant and all other parameters has to be done as a part of it so the product cost con collector is used in repetitive manufacturing for this costing run 
which must be costed in a separate transaction. And once you do the costing run, you must recalculate and release the cost to reflect changes in the production data like BOM, routing or master recipe and production versions. So this is how you need to do the costing run in the production in the product costing part. And the costing run is the most important part in the cost in the products uh, product costing module of the controlling part. So this is how your the, your product costing works within the SAP system and it is used where there is a manufacturing concern so as to decide the manuf the cost of production what it is all about and how and then accordingly you can decide the sale price and all other parameters and you can the organization can uh, have a check on the profitability and then decides and take many internal decisions for the future respective to the product or a new product or a product line of the business. So just to show you the costing run diagram in a view, this is how it works, which we have already discussed just to have this diagram just for your perspective, which will give you a, f a small a better idea of it. This is where you need to create a costing run with all those six parameters has to be filled first then saved and then executed. And this is done at the company code level where you have to define the costing variant then the costing date and the different parameters which we talked about. In the parameters in the selection part you decide the materials which need to be costed for which the costing run has to be done. Whereas on the other side there are partial selection of materials as well. And then the bomb explosions that is the bill of material you have to select over here. And then you execute. So once you execute the costing run in the last part that is when you release it. In that case the price gets updated. A new price gets updated in the material master data for the next period. And that new price becomes applicable for the next period for all the different valuations of material, bomb or maybe the next cost of production part. So this is all about the product costing part which we have discussed. We'll see you in the next training session with a different topic then. Thank you.